to determine uh, the distance from the neutral axis designated whatever y it is versus our strain. And if you recall, our strain, which is signified by the symbol epsilon, our strain, our strain was equal to the deformation. It's the ratio of the deformation over the original length. And so, from our from our previous from our previous uh, I guess our previous development, we we determined a relationship between our deformation and uh, and our distance from the neutral axis. And we also we also observed the relationship between the original length and the radius of curvature and the angle that that arc sweeps out. And so we can we can substitute in negative y theta for our deformation, and we can substitute in radius of curvature times theta for our length. And when we do that, we observe that our thetas are going to cancel out, leaving us with a simplified, with a more simplified problem. We now know that our strain is equal to the distance from the neutral axis divided by the radius of curvature. And so from, from here, we need to let y equal y max and observe that when y equals y max, that means that the distance from the neutral, the neutral axis here is going to be greatest. And when it's at its greatest, the deformation is, is at its greatest. And if the deformation is at its greatest, then your strain is going to have to be at its greatest amount. So we observe that the maximum strain is going to equal y max, which means the furthest distance possible from the neutral axis. Sometimes it's down, sometimes it's up. Um, so you really have to you really have to watch your signs here. Um, and it, if you draw your diagrams and if you think about what you're doing, then you're going to be able to get your signs right. If you just try and memorize the final equation, uh, to me that's a little bit more difficult, but it, it's still possible, but uh, a little more difficult. Higher chance for error. And so, so when we let when we let y equal y max. That means that the deformation is going to be higher. And if the deformation is going to be higher, that means that the strain is going to be higher. So by letting y equal y max right here, we observe that the strain is at, at its max. And so now we want to solve for the radius of curvature in terms of a constant. And that constant is, it's going to be, basically it's going to be the absolute value of y max over u max. Oh, or excuse me, not Emax, Epsilon, uh, or your max strain. And so, so once we have our radius of curvature in terms of a constant, because remember from, from the beginning that the radius of curvature is not going to change as long as the load doesn't change, because that, that arc of deformation is going to be the same. And so now, once we know that the radius of curvature equals the maximum distance from the neutral axis divided by the strain. We substitute, we substitute in uh, the max distance from the neutral axis over strain for the radius of curvature back up in this problem right here. So we're taking, we're taking this, our uh, y max over epsilon max, and we're substituting it in for our radius of curvature. And when we do that, we get our relationship of our distance from the neutral axis versus strain. And um, I say that because this is a constant here. This isn't changing. So as, as our distance from the neutral axis changes, our strain is going to change. And so now we have our strain in terms of the distance from the neutral axis. So our strain is our deformation is proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. Our strain is proportional to our distance from the neutral axis. 
and once again, our e max, our epsilon max over our y max is constant. Now, only only after developing our distance versus deformation and our distance versus strain uh, uh, equations, does it make sense for us to develop our distance versus stress relationship? And um, so now we have the tools required to to develop that relationship. And so we have our distance from the neutral axis versus our stress designated by theta. And we'll recall from Hooke's law that our stress is going to equal the modulus of elasticity times the strain. And remember that the symbol capital E equals the modulus of elasticity. And so, and, and we'll recall from our our distance versus strain relationship that our our strain I didn't, I didn't write it in here but we have our strain is equal to the max strain divided by the max distance from the neutral axis times the distance from the neutral axis, wherever you're looking for the strain. And so now we're going to do a little trick with algebra in order to get this equation in, in terms of something where we can make a substitution in for stress. And the way that we do that is by multiplying both sides by our modulus of elasticity. And you'll remember from uh, our torsion exercise that we sort of did the same thing, um, but we did it with um, with our variable g. And so once we multiply both sides by e, we're going to get our basically our our stress minus our max stress divided by our max distance from the y-axis times our distance from the y-axis, and. We, we, we can do that because we, we have, we, when we let our strain equal the maximum strain, we observe that our max stress is going to equal our modulus of elasticity times our max strain. And you can see that right up here. If you increase this to its maximum amount, you're going to see the stress increase to its maximum amount. And so we can do that. And, and now, now, uh, excuse me, now when we substitute in uh, theta and theta max for our for our strain and uh, modulus of elasticity and our strain and our max and our modulus of elasticity, we get that our stress equals our the negative of our stress max times the distance from the neutral, the maximum distance from the neutral axis times wherever we're looking for the stress. So wherever the stress is in this beam, so the max, the max stress in any cross section is going to be in this upper level here or in this lower level here. But it's going to vary linearly because we have a constant here. This is a constant. Designate that by k. We have a constant times our distance y from that from that set, from that neutral axis. And so we can we can now easily see that no matter no matter where we are, the closer we are to the neutral axis, the less the stress. The further away we are, the greater the stress. And this is the equation that we can use to develop more complex equations to determine to determine our uh, well, to determine many things, but basically to to determine when the beam is going to break or when it's not going to break. And we will get into that shortly. Thank you.